Hello again, this is Miss Murphy, and now I'm continuing with part two with your expressive watercolor portrait. And for part one, you were to draw your portrait using a continuous line, and meaning that you weren't lifting your pencil to draw your portrait. So if it looks like you drew it realistically, then you didn't really follow the directions on the video. Um, and what you needed to do was draw using a continuous line to create this expressive um, portrait. So now I'm going to start by adding color. And since we're doing an expressive portrait, we can really think about an array of colors that we can use to make our portraits expressive and maybe even express a mood or a tone in our portrait. So we should have your watercolor brush, your water, you wanna have a paper towel, and of course, your wonderful watercolors. So now I'm gonna start, and since you created this continuous line, and by the way, I also added a background where I did a continuous line of a window in the background, so I would say, you can even add to your portrait by adding a little bit, even if there's an object in the background or anything else you would like to add. Um, keep it simple. And so now I'm gonna start by painting my portrait and keeping in mind that since I'm using unusual colors and making this expressive, it doesn't actually quite matter um, if I'm making my colors realistic. However, we are going to use some of the watercolor techniques that we already learned about. Now, some color schemes you might wanna consider for this are maybe like warm and cool colors in combination. Um, and you know, when you start painting with watercolors, you wanna make sure you go from light to dark if you're creating layers. So sometimes I might have to paint a little bit darker um, after I create my first layer of paint. So I decided for mine that I'm going to do a combination of warm and cool colors, and I'm also going to be adding a little bit of blue into my face as one of my cool colors, but I'm also going to think about at least two of the tech or three of the techniques that we learned about. I wanted this side of my face. Now you can do you can decide whether or not you want to do um, different tones. I just was kind of building up my layers here. Um, and I wanted to start with a little bit of blue. And since I'm thinking about some of my techniques that we practiced, such as wet on wet, drop on wet, dry brush, flat wash, gradation, and blending layers. So I'm already thinking about creating a blending of layers with my blue and also my green. So I'm gonna gradually go from blue to green as I go up on this side. And I'm painting slowly and carefully. Now you might decide that you wanna do all warm colors in your face. I am using cool colors, but I kinda of started with a I started with another color as an undertone. So I used a little bit of orange and now I'm going on top of that, which actually makes it a different kind of tone of blue as you notice on this side. So when you do this, that mean when I say undertone or underpainting, that means I painted with a layer of color underneath and now I'm going on top of that, which you can still see with watercolor as it creates this transparency. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my green here and I wanna emphasize that also you wanna kinda of limit the amount of water you use. You don't wanna to do too much. And you can also do something where you create the water droplets. So I wanted to do a little bit of that here. So I'm going to do the drop color on wet. I wanted to do a little bit of that up here on my forehead and just kind of create these droplets. Makes it a little more expressive as we get out into the side of my portrait. And you may think it looks a little silly right now, but actually it's gonna really kind of blend together as I go. 
And I'm gonna think about other areas in my eye that maybe I wanna pull out later with another color. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit right now. And then I'm gonna go further out into my hair. And with my hair, I'm gonna use a little bit of red. And I'm gonna do a wet on wet here where I let a little bit of the red kind of bleed onto the water here so it actually makes it more transparent. So as you can see, I've already used a drop on uh, color, drop on color on the wet here, on the wet paper. I used a wet on wet technique. I'm gonna use, now if I want this red to look darker, I'm going to use some of my red paint, but without, with less water. So I'm gonna dry my brush on my paper towel, and then I'm going to take it and now you wanna look at some of these areas that you created with your continuous line as sections. So I'm gonna go in and paint some of these sections now in my hair. Even in your face, you can kind of divide it up into sections if you want. Some of you already, I saw in some of your portraits. So I want to create some sections in here based on my continuous line drawing I'm going to do a little bit more over here, and then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. And then in some of my other sections, I'm going to add another color. So like I said, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here in between. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow down here. This is a very expressive use of color here. So keep in mind as you're working with the watercolors to really take your time, let things dry, especially if you're um, building layers like I did. I wanted to show you that on here where I did an underpainting of some of the orange and then I did the blue on top, which gave it a completely different intensity and hue on this side. Um, and I'm also going to be going back into some of my sections here, like in my eyes, um, maybe using less water to make some areas darker, like I want to add some other areas of color. You want to also be sure not to mix colors that are complementary, such as red and green and blue blue and orange and yellow and violet because those colors will create kind of muddy murky colors and you want your colors to be nice and vibrant so make sure that you're keeping that in mind and remember you're also going to be painting your background as well I'm going to do a quick time lapse on this and then show you what your last steps are so good luck on your next steps remember that you're applying at least three of your watercolor techniques into your portrait painting and that this is an expressive use of color so consider how you're combining color schemes and how you're layering your colors when you're using the watercolors good luck with your next step